Hey guys and welcome to my UDK tutorial series part five. Okay. Um, in this, I'll um, I'll show you how to use Kismet. Um, so I'm actually not going to really be doing anything in this, because um, Kismet. What what we're going to be doing is 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 I'm going to show you how to script a sequence that will open these doors here whenever you get close enough. And to use this, the scripting sequence in, in um, UDK is Kismet, which is right up here. And also Matinee, which we're going to be using as well. But um, that's uh, that's after we I go through Kismet. So just click that little K button, or you could go, you could click um, File, or let's see. Right here, you go to Unreal Kismet, and click that, it opens the same window. And we'll just open this up, and right over here you have a picture of binary code, which really serves not much purpose, but it's just kind of neat, I guess. Um, not really important at all. <laughs> uh, you have, you know, various bookmarks type things to keep track of stuff, parent sequences, rename sequences, zoom to fit, because um, you can add these various things like this in here. And this is I just this is just something random. I just randomly pick something, you know. And uh so there's like these two things and you can zoom to fit. And so if you end up zooming out, because there's all this room, you can click zoom to fit and it puts it right back in the center like that. Um and then this right down here, um because you can form you can form like these sequences of of this does this and this does this so that you don't just have like stuff for a door and then stuff for like a door somewhere else all right here all jumped together you can form these like sequences and so you can use this to navigate through all of them and right now this is considering this as one sequence and I'll show you how to do um, creating whole sequences later I'm just going to delete those and this can also be jumped to the parent sequence which is the sequence under like the sequences right here would be the parent of tutorial, and if there was something under tutorial, tutorial would be the parent of that. Uh, you've got hide, show, connectors, I'll show you what those are in a sec. Um, new sequence object, basically you can just search for it, which does the same as just right here, right here, like doing this. So if I wanted a new matinee, I could click this and type um, matinee, and then it would have those right there. So, if you don't, if you know kind of what you want, like if you wanted some kind of you know, cinematic thing, you could just type in like cinematic. And it would give you different things. So, and then the search tool to search for things within your, um, all of your sequences. And open a new window, like if you have two desktops or um, clear all breakpoints. <sighs> okay, so basically what this is, is a visual scripting system. Um, and I'll show you this real quickly. Um, I'm just going to pick the first thing here, an actor factory. And you've got these, these little lines. And um, let me just um, get this, just random things here. Now, if I were to connect this to here, now wh what I'm doing right here isn't going to do anything. I'm just pu placing random things together. This wouldn't actually do anything at all. Um, these two things aren't going to go together typically. Um, just, but now if I use unused connectors, all of those bottom pieces go away because they're not connected to anything. Because you've got like these lines, and then um, let's see. Let's hide and let's show all connections. And so there it shows them all back. Um, so up, update and then clear all breakpoints. 
if you had like a bunch of just random things out randomly, you can clear up stuff. But y you drag these where you want them to go. And so it's it's instead of like going down here and typing in code, which there is a place to show the code at somewhere. I know that it shows the code here somewhere. I just don't remember exactly where that is. Uh, I'm sorry. I cannot remember where that code button is at the moment. So, um, but it, there is there is a place that you can go. And I'll try to find where that is later. Um, to f uh, get the c code of, of UDK if you wanted to like actually type in some stuff but that you would only need to use that if you are making an extension to the game and that would only in if um, you know you would have to know a lot about this more than I do to be able to do that but um, and basically this is already scripting all the code as you're doing this and so all you have to do is just tell it you know drag it in dropping stuff where to go I'll be showing you how exactly this works as we do something. Now, the only thing there's there's only one thing we have to do to be able to script this door, and the only thing that is is to right click in here, go to Add Actor, and go and add a trigger. Now, what this is is you can place this anywhere you want. Um, you just got to make sure that wherever you could place it all the way down here if you want to but wherever this radius is is where the door is going to open at so t I mean you know unless you wanted to play like some evil prank on the player you want to place it right here because you're going to want to go through it otherwise you know it would the door would open from way off and then close by the time they get to it because where when, when they're inside this the door is going to be open when they're outside of it the door is going to be closed and we're going to I'll show you how to script that um, but for right now we're going to click F4, open this up, go to trigger, cylindrical component, and then you can change the color, but that's not really going to matter. You can do all kinds of things, it's not really going to matter too much. That's, I mean, because there's really no, you're not going to see this at all. If I click G, if I went into game mode right now, which I can't because I have this window up, you wouldn't see this at all. Um, but right here, these are the two things we're going to mess with right now. Is the collision height and collision radius. The radius we're going to set to um, about like 100 or so. And then collision height um, doesn't really have to go up, but you kind of want to make sure that the player can get in there. So you want to set that up a little bit so that the player... Um, make sure and, and get through and then move it up so I mean because as long as the players inside this you're fine even if he's not fully inside of it it's it's fine so as long as you know that that should be that should be a good size um, actually I'll go ahead and do it about as high as the door just to be safe I'm on the safe side you, you do want to make sure that it there is a good connection because otherwise um, it won't open fully. So, probably going to need to extend the collision radius as well. You kind of have to just play with it a little bit unless you know the exact distance. And then we can move this over, center it up with the actual doorway. So about maybe right there. And, you know, when it says radius, it means like, you know, when it's referring to like the circumference of a circle. So technically this is 400 units long because the radius is 200. So could figure the circumference if you want to do some math, but I'm not really in the mood for that right now, so. And, of course, you've got a bunch of options here, and a lot of this isn't really um, that important unless you're working with creating specific type of um, things in Kismet having to do with lighting. Because, like, you can actually, um, you know, block cameras and, and stuff like that if you want to with this type of thing, if you have these things ch checked, but we're not worried about anything except uh, creating a door right now. So now you got to make sure you still have this. Selected. So I mean, if you click off right over here, and then you just make sure that you have this stuff showing right here, 
then open Kismet back up, this will still be selected. So that's still selected. Now right click and use new, and you have new object variable using trigger zero or new event using trigger zero, and then you have options here. Um, now, even though these are your only options to do with a trigger, there can be a lot done with these simple things using all the different actions that are here. You know, so you've got all these things that are within all of this that you all combine together to be able to create all kinds of stuff. Gears of War 3 was basically pretty much almost all of the entire game was built off using the simple actions that were in here. So um, we're going to go and use touched. Now, I'm going to explain what this means. This doesn't mean that the door is going to be touched. This means that any any um, thing that touches the inside of this, um, even um, like any player, uh, let's see, I, I think it even works on like vehicles or, or something. Anything that goes inside of this that is not just a normal static mesh. If it's moving or something, it it um, it'll it'll go in here. I mean, you can place meshes and meshes and stuff in here, but um, it won't matter unless it's considered dynamic or you know it, it's still or something. So, it anytime anything is is in here, it'll um it'll it'll fire off. So whenever the uh, the rim of this is touched or something is fully in this, then it'll it'll fire off a message from here. And whenever it's not touched, it'll fire off a message from here. Whenever it's empty, it'll also fire off the message. So basically, whenever it becomes like if it's if it's on, it'll do this. If it's off, it'll do this. And then if it's off, it'll, it'll also do this. But the difference between these two is is like the exact. It would be like the exact opposite of this. Um, except whenever it's empty, meaning it has nothing in it, so, it, like, if you touch, if you touch, you have to untouch, but then there's also a separate option for just being empty, um, if, if that makes sense. Um, if you mess with it, it'll kind of make a little more sense. So, basically what we have to do now is to give this because it's looking for something we don't need this menu anymore so we're just going to open right this up right here now its investigator is going to be the player so you could set this to be a specific static mesh or player or whatever like i said anything can set it off but you have to give it you know what it's looking for to set off um, i forgot to mention that part but this will al um, already be the player we don't have to worry about that thing. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I haven't done scripting in a while. I haven't been messing with uh, UDK recently because I've been distracted by other things. But um, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new matinee. I'm just going to kind of do this as we go. I did a lot of this, the matinee sequences, so I know how to do this for sure. This is how I created my intro. Oh man, that was that was a work, but it was, you know worth it but the matinee sequences so what we want this to do is we can either have the door be open all the time and then close when it's touched or we can have which by default has we have it set here it's going to be closed all the time until we have it open um, now you could op have the doors in the open position and then use matinee to close them if you wanted to but do do note that you have to have the doors in their default position before you do this because you can't use matinee to edit where their default position is so like cuz if if you did this you would have to actually um make before you created the matinee or well before you actually yeah went in and did the matinee and everything you would have to change the position of the doors instead of going into matinee and then changing it there. And I'll show you what I mean by that in just a second, but it's very important to note before you do get started that you can't do that because I, I made a mistake in that and it cost me a good bit of time, like many hours worth of time, thinking that I could do that because I set everything up in, that, in the wrong fashion. So 
you have to have everything in the default position first. So we're going to, when it's touched, it's going to open. So we need to go touch, and we're going to play this. And what that means is it's going to play an animation of the door opening, because a matinee is pretty much just a cinematic video type thing. And we're going to double click, and double click on, on the matinee, and it'll open up the matinee thing. And so this is matinee. I'm not going to go over all the options. It's pretty self-explanatory. Um, you know, simple, like, if you've done video editing or anything, this this will make a lot of sense. Uh, and for some reason, this is all the way down. Need to move that down some. Yeah, I don't need the properties menu right now. Okay. But it's very similar to, like, video editing. You have um, snapping, which we're going to go ahead and toggle. And then your snap size per seconds, um, FPS, uh, or keys. Um, and then, of course, this is whenever you have something selected, which the green section is whatever selected. You can just, like, drag this little green triangle right here. Just um, drag it. Like so. And it's snapping. Each... This is 2 seconds and 50. Well, this is 2.5 seconds, 3 seconds, 3.5 seconds. So automatically, you know, I could set this to 0 0.1 seconds. And as you can see, it's just like the same as pretty much no snapping. Because the lowest this will go is 0.1. Um, so, okay. And it shows right here the length of the, of the video. And you can expand the actual length. Because you can only animate past what this red triangle is. And so you want to make sure that after you finish the animation, you cut it to as short as possible. Because if you leave the animation longer, if it's like fired over again, it still has to finish the, the other animation. So say the animation was only like, you're actually only doing animating to three seconds, but you just left this to five, five seconds. If I walked out, of, if I walked in this and walked out, it would have to finish, it would have to do the whole five second animation like before resetting and um, if you have, you know, it, it's set to do that, which I forgot to actually go over um, if you go over here you have properties you can, um, I, I'm sorry I'm skipping around but uh, speaking of what I'm, sa what, what I'm saying, like, because if you have this set to um, a certain amount of triggers or in a trigger delay then this delay like because you can that if you set a trigger delay it'll set how many times you can use it like per second or um, which this is only set to like 0 0.1 seconds so we kind of want to maybe set this to maybe like one second and we want to make sure that this is actually zero which is the same as infinity so that it'll never run out um... and, and this way it, and now if, if it has a trigger count it'll start the one second after the full animation is done so if the animation is like only like one second it'll, it has an extra four seconds of just video that is not being used at all in the matinee it'll take a total of six seconds for you to be able to use it again because you have those four extra seconds with a total of five seconds of animation time where only one is being used an extra four seconds so you, uh, is not being used and you have an extra one second of trigger delay so you want to make sure that you get this down to you know just the animation and worry about the trigger delay on the kismet because you can also in addition to trigger delays you can also right click on the little um, things here and set delays there. And then you actually have delays um, somewhere in here. I don't remember exactly where, but there's actually delay nodes that you can place. So there's plenty of ways to delay stuff in Kismet, so don't worry about delaying stuff in Matinee, unless it's corresponding to other things in Matinee. <sighs> okay, so that long side note. Side, sorry about that. Um, this, to, to, um, eventually start, um, uh, like, actually animating this door, make sure you have the door selected, and then right-click, and do 
add new empty group and then you can name it whatever you, you want to do you can just do um, I'm gonna do right door now it'll have you the spaces all have a little bracket under it but that's okay now once you have this you you can't um, start animating until you right click on this and then you have an options of what you want this particular thing to do basically now you ha you're gonna want to select movement um, okay is this not an interp actor no it's static mesh so that's why um, I'm okay so I did that wrong um, I needed to set this as a static mesh which I didn't um, as, I'm sorry, as an interp actor. So, I'm going to go and replace with... Uh, let's see... Interp actor. And... Wait. Okay, find in content browser. So there's the door. I'm going to right click. I'm going to do... Okay, so once you have this, you find this in Content Browser again, you can actually go down here and it'll have Add Interp Actor. And there's the door. And actually, let me delete that real quick. I did that wrong. Cut. Okay. Go away. My delete key's not working. Let's just move that out of the way for now until my thing starts working again. Okay. I'll click on this and I'll go and I'll do um, replace with interbactor. Current editor. Mode. Oh, because I'm not in camera mode. For some reason it didn't, it switched me out of camera mode. So, yeah. I don't know why it did that. I didn't know there could be like a default editor mode. Okay. Again, replace with intervector. Continue. And there we go. And it retains the same shape. It just replaces the whole thing with now this is an intervector. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. So finding content browser. And it'll find it. And I can do replace with intervector. So there we go. Now I think I'll have to reset my my uh, tr my trigger here. Let's see. Cancel. So I'll have to go. I'll have to delete this, 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 and this. And I'll have to reset my trigger because I edited that. So I'll just go and I'll do add actor. So this is why you got to make sure that was my my mistake. I forgot to. Add those in as interp actors. So, trigger properties, we'll set this to be like, I'll do 300 this time. I'll do this, I'll do like 150. I'll move this up. And that's a little bit too big, but it doesn't matter right now. It, it's fine. And I'm actually moving this way a little bit closer to the door and it'll reach out on the other side because I'll add a platform later to that to that eventually. Okay, so that's still selected. I'll go in here quickly use new event touch. I'll make sure the match trigger count is zero, which is again the same as infinity. And then I'll do matinee touch to play. Double click that and Go in to leave this one empty group right door movement track and there we go okay so that is selected with the movement track so now what we have to do is we'll do like this and there's a little keyframe here at the default like one keyframe. And the one first keyframe is going to be your default. Now, 
I know it says adjust key movement, but like I said, you have to make sure that it stays in this position, because otherwise it will really glitch out. And it'll do the same movement that you designate, but in a different position. So you gotta make sure that even though it says adjust it, you can't. So, um, or at least I haven't figured out how to without making it glitch out. So, but now what we're going to um, do is open the door. So, what we have to do is you want to figure out how long it takes to open the door. So basically, how long it, it's going to take to go from point A to B will be how long um, will be where your second key point goes. So I'm going to say four seconds. It's not too terribly long. It'll go rather quickly, um, but it's not too short either. You know, one and two and three and four for both doors. It seems pretty good to me. So we'll set that right there and then you can edit this because basically we have our key point one and then our key point two is going to be where it's going to go to. And it's going to, want to see this yellow line right there. So we're going to set it, now I could set it anywhere along this wall but I have to consider that it's going to be moving and wherever I set it it's going to move from there to point zero where it was by default in four seconds so I have to consider that so I'm going to move it about right there so it'll be one and two and three and four and it'll move and it'll do it'll fit perfectly right where it is and it'll move it for you and even if I were to move actually I could move this out from the wall and it would go diagonally and it would fit right where it's supposed to go so actually matinee f does all the movement for you all you have to do is move it where you want it to start and it'll do all the movement for you. So now that we've got that there, um, we're going to actually move our animation down to four seconds. We're going to click on our other door, and we can actually right click in the same matinee and click New Empty Group, Group Name, Left Door. And we'll do New Movement, and we'll do the same thing right here. We can just do four seconds. And I did forget to mention, um, you add, to add a new keyframe, you can either click this button right here or click the enter key. I forgot to mention that. So, there's that. And you can actually right click on these and set a time if you set it th at the wrong place by accident. And it'll show, like if you click on it, it'll, it'll show where, what the time is below and also right over there. Okay. But now we're going to move this to a good spot. So why I say is this set to snapping? Actually, this has no snapping, so that would be important. I'm going to say about right there, because this is actually longer than that one. So you have to make sure that. Uh, okay, and I got to make sure I don't edit that one without first clicking on it. So I gotta click on it before I can move it, otherwise it'll snap back. Um, okay. So there's that. Well, we can exit that. And now, as you can see, they're both back to where they were originally. However, if we go into our game, and we don't actually have to rebuild lighting or anything for this, so that's a good thing. If we walk right up to here, they open. And there's that one sliding quickly. That one slides actually a little bit slower. But if you notice, they don't actually go back when we walk away. So what we have to do is we have to go into Kismet again. And we have to tell it to reverse when it's untouched. So basically it's going to play this backwards. Um, and you can move these around if you click on it. You just move it and it'll move all ones that are touching it. You can hold control to move ones individually. Otherwise you move the entire thing that's attached. Um, and you can just, you know, click individual one of these and move them around while still holding control. You can move those. But, and these are actually the um, actors that are attached to this. And as these get bigger, this will actually expand out and just create more. So you could create an infinite number of um, actors to go under one big matinee. But sometimes you don't want to do that. Um, you want to just, you can... I mean, because this, this pretty much has almost no delay. If there is one, it's like a nanosecond, which you wouldn't know. 
and the time it takes processing. So you could just make this one trigger activate multiple different matinees at the same time if you wanted to. You can drag, you know, you know, a billion triggers from this, and then we don't break all links. So, um, so there's there's that. And we, it'll it'll reverse, and it should work now. It should work like a door. So if we walk right over here to our door, it'll open up. There we go. There's that one moving a little slower. So there's that, and then it should close back. There we go. It just slides right there. However, there's no sound, unfortunately. So we need a sound. So what we're going to have to... Let me see... Okay, good, that's still recording. Just wanted to check. Now, if we wanted to add sound, we could do one of two things. We could add an ambience in the level of the sound of just metal. But that would be, you know, like all the time, not just when the door's opening and closing. So what we could do, but instead we can actually go right into Kismet. And um, what's good about ki uh, the matinees, we don't actually have to go into Kismet and then, you know, double click on this. We can just go right into matinee, and I meant to say matinee earlier when I said Kismet. We're not going into Kismet, but we're going to matinee. But you can actually just click right on this, and if you have multiple matinees that you've built, it'll just give you a list of them. And you can click one. So... What we're going to do is we're going to right click. I'm going to do a, um, I think it's a new empty group. Let's do that. I think it's going to be, let me see, sound. A soundtrack. And uh, we can just rename this. I just want to make sure that was the right group. And so, door sound. And so, what this is going to do is whenever this and see this is all along the same timeline so it during the entirety of this animation and if you just if you notice this little you know these are all along the same thing so if you want to have different lengths of different things you you do need to create different matinees um, cuz this is all corresponding together at the same time and this the length responds to all of these along the same thing it's i mean you know it's it's basically like video editing um, a lot. So if, if you're good at that, you're going to be good at the the matinee sequence thing here. Let's just get this a little closer. So during the entirety of the four seconds, we're going to have it play a sound, which the properties menu down here. I'm going to actually expand. Just bring that up. And, okay, so that's it. And, uh, let's see. We do want it to play on reverse. Wait. Okay, well, actually, we don't want that then. We can actually set it, we can actually set two sounds to have it. And we can just do, do that, but, uh, Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to go in and we're going to select a track in the content browser that we want to use. I'm going to go all assets and we're going to go sound cues. Now, we want to use sound cues instead of the other, which I believe is sound node wave, because sound cues... Um, sound node waves make up sound cues. So sound cues is actually made of several different sound node waves. So we're going to do um, door. Just type in door. Okay, so we have many different things. We have a a close, a close, open and an open, and we'll do the open, and we'll just use this one. So we'll just, um, A door metal 3 open stop queue. So we'll select that, and then we'll go right in here. And, oh, actually, I did this completely wrong. I'm going to delete this, and then, after I have it selected, because I'm an idiot, I'm going to do new empty group with that selected. 
and then I'm going to do new sound group. That way it actually has the sound selected because earlier it didn't have it selected. So now it has the sound selected. And I believe um, if I set this. Okay. Actually, no. I. Okay. So, yes. I was right at the very beginning. With this one, you don't get a default cue. I haven't actually ever done sounds. I. Um, I mean, I do know how to do a lot of this because I've, 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 well, I have used it before. I don't use this on a regular basis. I just, you know, did it to explore how it worked. But you, you place your cue in the the length of the, the sound will go, and then it'll stop. So we could actually place their sound at the end if we wanted to, like whenever it stops. So whenever we could, we could do that one. Wrong thing. I'm sorry. That was, oh man, I'm not doing very good today at all. Okay, so this is, what is the length of this? Middle, three, close, start cue, so it's about how long? 1.2 seconds. So if that's four seconds, about here-ish. And we can actually just move this over we could set the time to be 2.8 seconds that way it'll end it'll be um, 0.2 seconds which would be 3 and then 1 second would be 4 so that'll end right at the end okay so there's our um, entire track. So we can close this. See? And it works. However, it doesn't play on the reverse, so you would actually have to set a new soundtrack and do, like, the option that says, um, play right here says uh, play on reverse and you would have to um, create a, you could actually just click uh, copy group and we'll, we'll just do that and we could do um, paste group and it'll just do new group O and it'll have the same exact things but we'll just do play on reverse now unfortunately it'll we it would might might even be a better idea to uh, switch these in. For some reason, that's set all the way at the end. Oh, yeah, because they're going reverse, so it actually switches the dis the, the way that they are. So, the set time... Okay. But, yeah, if you do copy-paste, and, um, and you do play on reverse, what would happen is it would take these, and then it would just flip-flop them. So it would actually play the sound backwards, I, I think is how that works. So that you would get the same sound, but just played backwards. Um, but, you know, it might be better just to create it from scratch and just place these where you want them as it's, um, and then do play on reverse. Or, you know, you could create a whole new matinee, you, you could do it many different ways. But that's, uh, the entire of this tutorial. We should have a working door now. Um... And there's a lot of more matinee things that you can do. Just wanted to show you the basics of matinee and Kismet and how that worked. So, now you've got an opening door. Um, you know, opening, working, fully functional door. And you can use that to actually move pretty much any static mesh. Or spawn in giant crowds of things. Or all kinds of things. You've got, you know... <sighs> AI, um, so you've got camera moves, cinematics, demo, you actually have a thing to create demos for your games, you've got all kinds of different level options, um, projectiles, switching teams, toggling vehicles, announcements, all that kind of stuff. You can do all that with, uh, with the Kismet. And, you know, if you have any questions on this thing, you can ask me, I'm not 
that great with Kismet. Unfortunately, I've been working with it, trying to figure it out more. But, um, and I don't claim to be an expert on this, but, you know, I, I try to create tutorials based on what knowledge I do have. <sighs> but that will be all, and sorry for the long and stuff I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do better, but I tend to be talkative, as you can tell. So I'm going to stop this now, and I'll see you guys in another tutorial.